He was advanced in the field of medicine, and he even wrote books on measles and smallpox. When we read medicine, we know that Ali ibn Abbas, he wrote 20 volumes on practice and theory of medicine. We are told about Avicenna, Avicenna, the Aristotle of the East. It is Ali ibn Sina. Ali ibn Sina, he was called as the Aristotle of the East. He was a philosopher, he was a mathematician. So when we go back to history and we see that we Muslims, we were on top of the world. The reason we were on top of the world at that time is because at that time, we were close to the Quran and Sunnah. Now, we have gone away from Quran and Sunnah, and that's the reason we are in the firing line. We should see to it that we bring our children close to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. It is a duty that we give our children proper education. That's the reason, I say, that your children are your amana. See to it, you give them proper education for both the worlds. And this was a dilemma that I faced maybe eight years back. And though, alhamdulillah, I used to give talks on education. And I did take time to choose my life partner because I wanted the right life partner. And finally, Allah gave me, alhamdulillah. And when the children were born, my eldest son is 12 years old. And I always had that thing that we should have a proper school which has a striking balance between the Islamic education and the formal education. I don't call mathematics science as secular education because secular by definition means nothing to do with God. I believe science believes in God. Mathematics is Islamic subject. So therefore, when I talk about the other conventional subjects, I call them formal education. Mathematics, science, history, geography, English. We call it as formal subjects. So I always had that dream that to have a school which has the striking balance between the Islamic subjects, Islamic education, and the formal education. Because mathematics, science, history, according to me, is part of Islam. And that made me tour the world. And I did a survey, alhamdulillah, of most of the Islamic schools at that time. That was about six to eight years back. In a span of two, three years, mashallah, I went to most of the best schools of the world. In America, in Canada, in UK, in South Africa, in Australia, in Malaysia. And I visited hundreds of schools. And when I observed that in the Western countries, most of the Islamic schools, almost all, they were more of a Muslim managed school. Muslim managed school means the management was Muslim, but I could not call them, I would not call them as Islamic school. Because we realize that in the Western world, there is a fear of alcoholism, of drug addiction, of our obscenity. So in these schools, we found that the dress code that the students wore, they were Islamic hijab, mashallah. They had a time for prayer, for salah, alhamdulillah. There was no alcohol, there was no drug, alhamdulillah. So that was what was called the Islamic school. Where back in India, most of the Muslim man is school. They have the Islamic dress code. You can offer salah. There's no alcohol, there's no drug. So I did not find something new. But alhamdulillah, considering the Western country, where drug addiction is common, alcoholism is common, obscenity is common, it is an achievement which I was happy. But what I came to search for, that when our children go to school, they should get the best of knowledge, I could not find any of the schools. What we wanted that we have now the Muslim ummah, rather divided into two types of education. One type of education, when we have secular education, they acquire the so-called secular education, which are called a formal education. They acquire knowledge of mathematics, science, history, geography, but they are far away from the deen. On the other hand, when we go to our madrasas, 
we teach about Quran, Hadith, Sharia, Fiqh. Alhamdulillah, may Allah give them reward. But they are unaware of mathematics, science, history, geography. So the thing is that we wanted a balance between the two. To have the best of both. Which, when visited most of the schools that I visited, now the thing is changing. In the past six years, I've realized that some schools have become slightly closer, alhamdulillah, to the concept that I have. But most of the schools, they may be having maybe three periods a week on Islam, or maybe one period a day. Maximum I came across was two periods a day on Islam. And what was the main objective that a child, when he passes from school, he should have the knowledge of Quran, Hadith, Sharia, Fiqh, and science, etc. That I could not find. Though I visited the best of schools in America, in South Africa, which is supposed to be very much advanced in this field of Islamic schools, UK, Australia, Malaysia, etc. So that we thought that let's make an effort. And with Allah's help, Alhamdulillah, we in Bombay, Alhamdulillah, about approximately six years back, or rather five and a half years back, we launched our own Islamic school by the name of Islamic International School. Because for my children, we had to do it. Though I was prepared to see to it that gear up my child, though putting in a convent school by giving all the so-called education at home. But then we thought that we should make a sample school. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, we ventured with this project in Bombay, and Allah helped us. And with Allah's support, we launched the school. And Alhamdulillah, from day one, the response that we received from the people of Bombay, from the Muslims of Bombay was tremendous, mashallah. The response was such that though the school was absolutely new, we hardly publicized it. We decided to start the school. There was only three weeks publicity, mashallah. But immediately when the school was launched, the amount of response we got was phenomenal. And it was overwhelming that ministers, they phoned our school to see to it that some of their friends got admission to the school. It was good, mashallah. You will hardly find a minister phoning a madrasa and telling that, you know, I want a seat in your madrasa. We find that in the convent school. In India, most of the convent school, the ministers phone, and they try and use the influence. But alhamdulillah, we are very strict as far as, far as admission criteria is concerned. We are very strict with the guidelines. And unless a person fulfills our guidelines, let him be a minister's son also, we won't give admission, alhamdulillah. The difference that is there, that we appreciated that the movement that was started by many of the philanthropists and educationists throughout the world, it was a good movement. At least they are giving them an environment of Islam. So I was really happy that in the Western countries, whether it be USA, UK, there were schools in which a child could at least practice his Islam. But in the school that we launched, we had a different system we had, that I wanted a striking balance that when a child passes the 10th standard, he should become at least an average alim when he passes from Darul Ulum. As well as be able to compete with the best of convent schools in that city. That was the aim. And with that target, we started the schools. And we did many unconventional things, which people told it's not possible. But Alhamdulillah, with Allah's help, we did it. The timing of a school is quite long. It starts from 8 o'clock, right up to 5 o'clock. For nursery, it is less. We started school from nursery, from the age of three. And the first year, we had nursery, junior kg, senior kg, and first standard, only four classes, only four grades. And the timing from first onwards, first upwards, is from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And people said the timing is too long. Students won't be able to take it. But alhamdulillah, we divide the day into 12 periods each of 35 minutes. On average, two periods every day is for extracurricular activities. Martial arts, whether it be Taekwondo, Judo, 